Hey everyone, Mark here at the Photography Studio, and I wanted to tell you that the Four Horsemen Toy Company has a new product line that they launched. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, they make Mythic Legions, which are these six inch fantasy figures, of which I personally am a big fan and supporter of. I pick up figures all the time off of their Friday sales, I order their pre-orders, and I hunt on eBay for my favorite figures to fill out the collection. Well, they have a new product line launching called Cosmic Legions. It's a bit of science fiction, and we're going to show those off today and talk a little bit about them. So, Four Horsemen, who are they? They are a boutique toy company in New Jersey that consists of um, really talented uh, sculptors and craftsmen who made toys for McFarlane, they worked for Mattel, they've done uh, DC Classics, Masters of the Universe Classics, they've done some Harry Potter, and they have their own toy line that for a long time was Kickstarter only. Now you can get them pre-order off of their website or you can also find them at places like Big Bad Toy Store, of which I give a thumbs up and will occasionally order stuff from there myself. And so I'm kind of a fan of the Four Horsemen and I specifically like their fantasy line called Mythic Legions, of which I have a few characters. Recently acquired this dog, did a unboxing video and didn't really do it any, any justice. I need to go back and revisit it because I was looking at it today and the amount of detail on this figure is just phenomenal. I was just looking at like the painted chainmail and it got me really excited even more about these guys. So recently, I think uh, within like the last week or so, they announced their uh, Cosmic Legions, their science fiction line that they're putting out. And this has been talked about and in the works for a really long time. So it wasn't like we didn't know this was coming. These guys um, have had this in the can for the, a while and they just haven't really sort of um, shown anything official until recently. So I thought that what we would do is, uh, is go to their website and take a look at the first wave and offering and talk a little bit about the figures and talk a little about the uh, future of the line and also sort of the toy collecting aspect of this down the road. So let's click over here to... Uh, to this view. Hope everyone's having a great time, by the way, and a great day. I know I am. It's a lot of fun here being surrounded by toys and uh, just coming up with all sorts of crazy photo shots of them and posting them later. Um, so uh, this, is, uh, this is the current checklist. That's what um, Four Horsemen does. They put out a checklist of sort of like all the figures you can get so that you don't um, you know, you're not misled into fi finding a figure like an Assassin's Creed guy and thinking, oh, it's Myth Mythic Legions, but if he's not on the checklist, it's probably not theirs. So this is their, uh, their offering here, and uh, essentially what the science fiction world is, according to um, uh, the, uh, the story of Cosmic Legions, which I'm going to click on right now. So it's a, it's a type of space world that... Um, that has all these sort of different um, class structures of these sort of like rings and at this furthest ring it's sort of a it's like a prisoner um, area you know like an escape from New York kind of thing where they sort of throw all the guys in and it becomes sort of a, an arena battle and you make teams you make friends you make enemies and so this line is around that it's going to be people who are prisoners it's going to be people who are guards, it's going to be like wardens, it's going to be, un, you know, kingpin bosses, that kind of thing, but a science fiction slant. 
that's what I got from reading this. There's, you can go and read it if you want. I'm just giving you the subtext. So if we go back to the, uh, the actual figures, um, you've kind of got sort of three, three main, three main factions, right? So there, of course, are going to be the people who are the prisoners, and that's uh, this character and this guy. The, the more he normal hero humanoid-looking people um, are going to be the people who are in jail. Uh, and then you've got these uh, sort of um, uh, kind of more generic terms. They don't have as much paint, and the characters themselves are just sort of a bodysuit with an alien head. And, uh, you know, it's like this guy. And these are sort of more like... Um, uh, like a, a guard or, um, you know, uh, someone who works at the prison, some kind of a worker bee, a kind of a foot soldier. And these are the, uh, the lowest priced, by the way. Those clock in at, uh, for the pre-order sale, not including the shipping, uh, $26, which is actually really good. And when you consider that, like, you know, some of these Marvel Legends figures are, what, they're about 23 bucks now for a 6-inch. And, um, and a lot of them are just generic. Like a Black Widow will just be just a female body just painted black with a couple of, you know, wristbands. And it's like, really? 23 bucks for that? But, okay. So, as far as the value goes, these things, way through the roof. Uh, and then there's this sort of third faction that are um, these weird kind of like insect guys, right? And, uh, and these are, are you should check these out. These are pretty cool looking. The paint on these is pretty cool. The sculpture on these is pretty cool. These are pretty mind boggling how they come up with this stuff. And I realize that they are, um, they're doing digital sculpting now. They don't necessarily work it in clay. They, they work around in software to get what they want. And they probably print out a prototype. And from that, they're able to to make the molds, or maybe they hand them the digital file, and from the digital file they make the molds. Something I've wondered about because I, I've been finding, um, you know, I do a lot of combing of like thrift stores and Goodwills and things like that, and I'll, I'll find like a, a six inch, you know, like a Spider-Man figure, and then you find like a four inch version of it, and it's like exactly the same, but just scaled down, as if like somebody took this figure in the computer and took the mouse in CAD software and just held down the, the you know, the shift key and just like sh shrunk it down and said, here, make this. So, these guys, um, the skill they have at like making characters now, I don't think there's anyone who can touch them. I mean, there's some other really cool stuff going out there, some other really cool companies. Um, NECA always makes great looking stuff. I love their Iron Maiden characters, the Eddie characters, plus they do uh, some other rock stuff. They do a Vic Rattlehead, they do a Stormtroopers of Death figure. Um, they do a lot of pulp cult culture figures. Then there's um, Mezco, and they've really been crushing it on the uh, six inch figures, the 112, like the, the Gomez and the Nosferatu and um, and man, those are just always very cool when you see shots of those guys. There's so many great poses you can do with them. Um, and then there's these guys, the Four Horsemen, who just make a really stellar-looking product. And this is a prime example. This guy, this guy is crushing it. This weird insect lord. And, um, you know, I don't know who's even, uh, who's even coming close. I mean, if you look at something like... If you look at something like Hot Toys or Kumik, you know, they, they offer you like a $200 12-inch figure that looks really good. Like the Indiana Jones guy looks like Harrison Ford, looks photorealistic. The Catwoman um, from these guys, like a Hot Toys or Kumik uh, 12, 13-inch Catwoman, just looks phenomenal. But they're only doing sort of safe figures in terms of the money. They're only going to touch something that's very popular, very sort of um, widespread in terms of pop culture, like an Indiana Jones, a Catwoman, a Joker, things like that. They're not gonna do, they're not gonna do crazy stuff like this, right? And um, then there's a few really big figures here, like this guy, High Warden Slog. He's obviously kind of a, you know, I think this guy's like $80. And um, 
you know, look at this thing. This thing is just, um, it's, this is just crazy. Absolutely crazy how they put this thing together. It's got kind of a creature from the Black Lagoon in a, uh, in a suit, in a spacesuit kind of thing. It's, it looks a little bit like the Bioshock guy a little bit. It's got all the kind of classical elements of, of a little bit of steampunk, a little bit of, uh, you know, um, Star Wars lived in look, uh, space opera to him. I don't know how much articulation this guy is going to have. I think he's just kind of like moves a little bit. You know, he's sort of um, really kind of a centerpiece. Here's like some extra accessories I guess he comes with. Here's a great shot. Look at this. They put him with this like cool science fiction looking uh, background. Slog is his name. This is perfect. There's another sort of big guy, Kragnar. Right, so the most, most part they're six inches. There's a few either bigger this way or bigger this way. I haven't looked into the full details. Um, the painting on this guy, I mean, look at this. It's, it's, like, a, uh, it's like a 59 Gibson Les Paul sunburst. Um, you guys don't realize how cool these are. And of course, you know, it's all lit really well. And um, look at that, you can tell it's a toy because of the, uh, uh, the little um, uh, plastic joint part. Very cool. You know, um, this is next level kind of craftsmanship here. And, uh, and these guys really sort of crush it. it. Comes with two heads. Let's see what the two heads are. So one where he's going like this and one where his mouth is closed, a couple of fists, there's a cool weapon, uh, a lot of cool detail on this. I don't know how they, how they managed to, uh, to pull this stuff off. Let's look at his hero shot. I think that's pretty cool. This always works. This is kind of like a Star Wars motif where you take sort of a slatted grate and you have light coming down, illuminating the figure underneath that gives you that sort of like underground cell feel and look he's got like chains on him so he must be in like the, must be one of the prison guys sort of the big antithesis to the uh the slog guy so if we go back to uh here let's um let's go to the shop shall we so here's the shop here's all the all the figures for sale again $25 for the the three sort of plain jane guys they're um Century, a science officer, an engineer. So they're sort of middle-class worker bees. Looks to be about uh, $48 for the insect guys. Um, kind of a bit, a bit much, but they're worth it. They're pretty cool. The big dog is 80. The second to big dog is 65. There's some weapon weapons packs, of course. Uh, they sell stands. I don't know that I would buy a stand. You can get kind of stands anywhere, but four horsemen stands might be a cool thing to have. Might be a cool thing if you are planning on buying one of these to resell. It might be a cool thing to, um, to have with it. It might increase the value for an extra five bucks. It might set yours apart. It comes with the stand. Everyone always likes to hear stuff like that. Uh, then there's sort of these... Um, uh, the sort of more humanoid looking people. They're uh, more protagonist main characters. They seem to clock in around the uh, $37 range. So there's 25, 37, 48 are the three tiers. And I think you get what you pay for with each one. I think there's way more paint and detail on the cheaper guys. I believe that there's a lot more detail and paint on the more expensive guys, and it's kind of a range. Of course, the physically bigger guy, the ogre class, as they kind of call him, is, is going to be the most expensive. I think we should go back to the uh, the checklist here again, and uh, and just sort of wrap this up by talking a little bit about what these guys uh, chose to do for their first wave. Um, I can't wait to see future waves. I wish we could speed this up and, and get like 40 guys out of the uh, the four horsemen on these science fiction waves. Um, so it looks like the approach that they took to creating this science fiction universe is uh, something a little different than what what most 
people who do space opera, space fantasy, science fiction worlds tend to do is, is in the style of sort of, um, I, I guess, uh, it seems kind of weird to say this now, as if like this is some sort of like ancient memory hole thing, but it seems like starting with like the original uh, Star Wars 77 George Lucas film, the idea behind that was to take a galaxy, a space galaxy, and have it populated with humans. Because pretty much in the first Star Wars movie, for the most part, everywhere you go, it's humans, at least in the movie. Now there's a few robots thrown in, which is cool, cool idea, no problem with that. Uh, and then apart from uh, Chewbacca, right, um, there's exclusively almost no aliens in that movie except for the cantina scene, which is all aliens, right? It, you, you walk in there and, um, you know, it's mostly aliens, guys in rubber masks, mostly aliens with a few humans sort of sprinkled in so as to say like, okay, this is how the galaxy is really spread out. It really looks like these different races. And, um, and we just happen to see the human beings as one of many, right? Um, and, and that's sort of the idea that you get from the cantina. But if you remove that cantina scene, right, and you look at all the guys on the Death Star, all the, like the rebel pilots, all like Luke and his family, and, um, and the, the, you know, they, like they don't hire aliens, they hire Han Solo to take them. He happens to have a weird alien sidekick, right? So apart from the Chewbacca and the cantinas, there's really no alien life in Star Wars. And other science fiction themed movies and shows follow that. It's Star Trek's like that too, by the way. The next generation really has that kind of like, it's all humans and then there's, uh, there's an, one alien race that we meet. And it's all humans and there's another alien race that we meet. And these guys, didn't do that, right? They didn't start with all humans and then add a couple of sidekicks and stuff like that in. What they did is they started with pretty much an all alien universe and then they um, they decided to shoehorn in, and I use the word shoehorn just because I like the way it sounds. I, I mean, I don't actually, you know, I wasn't on the committee for any of this stuff, so I don't know how it really went down. But they decided to put in only sort of one human now, what I think is interesting about this is that when you look at the Mythic Legions characters, it's kind of made up of all humans, right? And then there's a few sort of humanoid type beings thrown in, some elves, some dwarves. Then they started adding orcs and skeletons and things like that. But for the most part, an orc is still kind of a human, you know, in terms of like its, its body parts and whatnot. But for the most part, it seemed like they were doing all humans, humanoids with that. And when they went to this line, maybe they were burnt out on that. Maybe they wanted to just get away from that and do something totally off the wall different. And so as a result, you really only get one human character in this line. And it's, it's this um, girl here and she's, you know, sort of blue skinned and face tattooed. And it's got kind of a cool sort of, um, you know, sort of spacesuit, uh, cloth, uh, poncho kind of thing. Really goes back to that, um, that lived-in universe aesthetic, the cool boots. Uh, I don't know why they gave her the, the Bauhaus Adolf Hitler haircut. I don't know if they think that's cool or something. Maybe it's cool. Maybe I don't know what's cool. Maybe these guys know it's cool and I'm dumb. But I don't really like the haircut. Um, other than the fact that, you know, it just is an attempt, I feel, to try to make people's hair look alien. You know, comb it off to one side. Um, but whatever, you know, you got to make a choice. And I'm sure there'll be uh, plenty more human or humanoid characters coming up in the uh, next wave. Oh, this is interesting. So they come up with these, um, these different factions that the characters belong to, and they have their own sort of symbol. They did this with mythic legions. And, um, and here this character actually has the symbol printed on the back of the poncho. And uh, this looks really badass. This is cool. This gets a thumbs up from the action figuratorium. Let's look at the hero shot they put in. They put in one. This is very 
very cool with the um, the the uh, the light flare across it. Maybe that was done in camera using actual bouncing actual lights, or maybe they did that in post. Doesn't matter. Looks cool. It's kind of what this thing's all about. So. They went heavy on the aliens, and they went light on the humans, and I think that that, I think that's kind of a good move, in a way. Um, it may not be the best financial move, but I don't know that these guys necessarily need that because they are kicking so much ass that they have um, plenty of diehard fans and followers, and when it comes to people who like to do customs and customizing figures, these guys. Um, make their characters, make their toys for that, and they encourage that, and they showcase that. If you do Mythic Legions mods to your toys, if you repaint them, mix and match the, um, the parts, make custom pieces for them, come up with capes and other things you put on them, maybe make a, a different head even, sculpt an old, a different head for a, a guy's body, the Four Horsemen seem to love it, and they promote it on their website, in their blogs, in their uh, podcasts, and so I can't wait to see what people come up with uh, for these. I think with these characters, I think what you really need is, you really need cool science fiction sets that are as good as the figures themselves. It's going to be pretty tough for me if I got, like, say, this guy, just for example, if I picked up uh, um, Angry Grasshopper Man here, um, I don't have anything that looks good enough to put behind this guy, right? I, I, um, I would have to make something. Uh, I'd have to make something new from scratch. I don't have anything laying around that looks looks this good for this guy. Uh, you know, I can see why they, um, let's see what his hero shot looks like. I can see why they, they came up with some, oh, they don't even have a, sh uh, a cool shot for him. I can see why they came up with, uh, with some of these, um, yeah, let's check this one out. I can see why they came up with some of these, uh, these shots that they did where they have the, um, uh, you know, like the, in all these they have a, uh, trying to bring up sort of the prison aspect. They have this sort of like gate overhead with, uh, with light coming through it. You've seen a lot of these and they just come up with different gates and then behind them. And um, I don't know, that it could have been done on a green screen and, and photoshopped in for all I know. This could be some CGI background, but I get the feeling that it's a, um, or it could be just a, a painted, uh, painted thing that just dropped behind it. Um, but if it is like an actual structure and it's lit and it's got all that design on it, they are pretty cool dioramas that, that work well with these guys and they really sell the toy. Uh, I only wish that, um, that the Four Horsemen guys were, were even a little bit more aggressive in their branding and marketing, especially as it relates to um to shipping out their packages they they have plenty of fans they could they could man these guys are just missing so many opportunities to uh to go all in on uh on promoting themselves because a lot of people love these cats and uh and they do really cool work and so i want to see them succeed and i want to help them succeed and uh and i really love these toys and um I think that they're uh, they're going to be a great investment. I think if you had to if you had to buy one, um, let's say let's go back to the uh, man. Let's go back to the uh, store for a second here. Almost done, folks. About ready to wrap it up just talk real briefly about what if you wanted to buy one of these and long con put it away for a while sit on it let it appreciate again i think toys are a really good storage of wealth to invest in similar to a stock 
a bond, a crypto, precious minerals such as gold. I think if you buy a Sentinel or a Galactus from HasLab, uh, not to play with it, but to, as a storage of wealth that it's going to appreciate in value. I think it's a good investment. Um, you just have to put it away and sit on it a while to get that out. But you know that that money is there and you can squeeze it out if you have to. So in terms of these guys, what should you probably buy? Well, I myself am kind of like an eBay thrift store junkie and so I'm, you know, I'm easily good for a $25 figure because it's it's easy to justify the price. It costs about as much as uh, other brands, Star Wars, Marvel Legends, which none of those I like or touch necessarily. There's a few guys I like, a few characters I like from those, but I don't follow the brand and like the brand per se. Um, I like the characters and if it happens to be a Marvel Legends that's fine. So uh, they're not that much more expensive for these entry level guys. Are they as cool as the other guys? They are not. They are not as cool but you get what you pay for. So don't pretend like oh who knows. So um, what I would probably buy is um, if I was buying one to to invest, I would get the most expensive one because people are probably going to buy the least of those, right? It comes down to supply and demand. At the end of the day, it's all supply and demand. You can get emotional about something. You can feel really strongly about something. You can claim that it's worth more than, than what it is. You can show all the bogus eBay, fake, Disney, black, diamond label, VHS tape, auctions all day long with the fake phony numbers and say they're worth this. The reality of the matter is supply and demand, right, dictates everything. Even if there's a huge supply, if there's a large demand, you'll do well. But overall, you know that if there's a small supply, you're going to do best and that's going to be this guy. The $80 guy is going to be your best investment. Am I telling you to buy one of these? Well, if I did, that might be considered a pyramid scheme. If I was giving you that advice, I'm offering the opinion based upon which I think they're going to sell the least amount of is this guy. Now, what happens is people will all come up with the same idea at the same time, which is how I came up with it, which is just based on numbers, right? And then if everyone buys one to resell, right, well, then it's not going to be worth as much. But I get the feeling that they're probably going to sell a whole lot of these $25, $37 figures. Again, people are going to buy the ones that they like the most. I bet you the ones that people um, buy the most of that like the looks of them are going to be this uh, Sphexian prison guard, this insect guy, because he looks phenomenal. This just looks phenomenal. And anyone who wants to display a toy or photograph a toy is going to get the best looking guy and this is the best looking guy on the team. I think that the um, I think that these sort of weird uh, more kind of generic sort of what would be in a movie would be a protagonist guys. I, uh, I don't know how they're going to do sales wise. I, I wish that um, Four Horsemen would talk about um, what their best sellers are. It's just interesting to uh, to hear what other people like, right? Because it's easy for me to look at and go, oh yeah, this looks cool, you should buy it. But not so sure. Some people may be absolutely crazy about, um, about Zirai, um, or Ziri, I guess, if you pronounce the I as an E sound. Uh, some people might be totally crazy for this character, mainly because she looks like she could play nice with, with other characters. Like she could walk in to any scene you have, whereas, um, you know, and just be kind of like a weird star pilot. Whereas if, um, you know, if this guy walks in, it's uh, he steals the scene, you know. This guy is it. He's the biggest, he's the elephant in the room. He's huge. So if you're going to... Invest in a guy, invest in the ones that have the uh, least amount made, which are probably going to be the most expensive ones. So you're going to work backwards. You're going to get Slog. You're going to get Kragnar. That's the $80 and the $65 guy. 
Um, at that point, it doesn't really matter. Um, those are long cons. If you're just looking for something to get and flip in a year, um, consider getting something that somebody else will be able to afford later, right? When people are shopping stuff, people tend to buy the cheapest thing. And if you have something you didn't pay very much for, like you got 25 bucks into it, and you go, oh, I can flip this for $50, right? And make 25 bucks on this guy. Well, more people can come in at $50 than they can in 80, 90, 100, $200. So if you're looking for things to flip fast, buy cheap guys. If you're looking for stuff to flip in the long con, buy the most expensive guys. And if you're looking for something for yourself, pick out what you like. Pick out what you think is the best looking one and enjoy it. And that is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to flip any of my guys. I'm going to pre-order a couple of these dudes that I think are the coolest. And I'm going to have so much fun putting them into crazy situations with other crazy characters, uh, including maybe even some of the, uh, the Mythic Legions guys. Maybe there'll be some kind of a... Uh, a time traveling warp in which uh, aliens come through a portal and discover the Middle Ages, in which case there's a good chance that, uh, that they get a, a mace to the head. So um, I'd like to thank everybody who, uh, who made it this far into the video. I know this autistic rambling is more than most people can handle, but it's just sharing some thoughts on a fun line that we all like. So um, I hope to see you in the next one.